to the very first Sewing 101 tutorial. Today I'm going to show you the minimum selection of supplies that you'll need to start and plus a few more options as well. I'm Lydia and I've been sewing for over 10 years. I now create YouTube tutorials and PDF patterns for you all because I really just think anyone can learn to sew. I think it's such a great skill to learn in this day and age. I mean, I've been able to create 90% of my wardrobe. So in this series, I'm really excited to show you all types of things that you need to know, such as what to look for in a sewing machine, how to operate your sewing machine, sewing tips and techniques, and there will also be some beginner-friendly sewing tutorials so that you can start working on that handmade wardrobe. So let's get started. When it comes to those bare necessities, those simple bare necessities of sewing life, it's really not a whole lot. You can actually find most of these things at the thrift store or dollar store. You don't have to break the bank to begin. Otherwise, there are many online shops that you can purchase from. I'll be sure to list all of these supplies in the description with a link for you. The most basic essential is a supply of sewing needles. A pack of sewing needles retails between one to three dollars. These are actually a pack of vintage needles that I got secondhand, but any sewing supply will have varying qualities of needles. These are handy to have around for buttons, basic mendings, and sometimes some fine sewing when finishing garments. If you don't want to invest in a machine just yet, you can hand sew clothing it's just very time consuming. If you want me to show you how to sew a simple garment totally by hand, let me know in the comments. If there's enough interest, I might just do it. You can't sew without thread, so you'll need to purchase polyester sew all thread. This will work for 90% of garments you may sew. I would start with a white and black spool. I have these big ones that I got in a sewing supply store. So all thread is usually polyester thread with a Tex 27 size. Higher than that is for heavier fabrics like denim or upholstery. For beginners, I recommend Guterman's Sew All Thread. An assorted color pack retails for around $30. It's nice to have a variety of colors on hand so that you know you don't always have to buy a new thread color when you choose a new color of fabric. I can remember hacking away through my fabric with dull scissors, and it ain't fun. So get yourself a pair of sharp scissors to use solely for fabric, as paper or anything else you might want to cut will dull them quickly, and you don't want to work with dull scissors. You don't have to break the bank for a starter pair. I often use these whisk scissors for cutting fabric, and they were only $13 from my local home hardware store. Later on, you can invest in a $25 to $50 pair like these ones, which I do prefer for most of my fabric cutting. For making paper patterns, just get a pair of dollar store scissors. I've had these pink ones for five years and I love them. They still work great. Some people prefer to use a rotary blade and cutting mat. I only really use this for delicate fabrics, but at different periods of my sewing journey, I almost exclusively use them, so they're not necessary, but they're something to consider. But it's going to be a little bit more of an investment than just a regular pair of scissors, so do keep that in mind. You could also get snips, which are basically mini scissors that are really handy for snipping hanging threads. These pink ones were around a dollar or so, but these other gold mini scissors, which are very fun to use and higher quality, are more like $15 each. I actually think both of these were gifts and excellent gifts at that. If you have a sewer in your life, get them a pair of beautiful little snips like this. Hey, no! You absolutely need a tape measure if you want to sew clothing. It's great if they have both centimeters and inches on either side, and it's also great if they're 60 inches long. Tape measures are very versatile. I've seen sewers use them in all capacities, but you could also get some rulers. This grid ruler is really great for pattern making. And a meter stick, of course, is also great for dresses and general long garments. This one was only $2 or so from the dollar store, so it's a pretty good bargain. Mm -hmm. 
Pins are essential. They help keep your fabric in place as you sew, and you can also pin pattern pieces to your fabric to keep them in place as you cut. I like these glass head pins. They were $5.50 for a nice little pack of them. They're very thin but strong, whereas cheaper pins tend to be thicker and not as sharp, and can sometimes snag your fabrics. A dollar store set will be fine, but you will love these higher end ones. For pin storage, I love this wrist pin cushion, which is $5.99. It makes these pins so easy to use and keep track of as I move from my cutting table to the sewing machine. I highly recommend. This is a very useful tool. It allows you to unpick stitches that you didn't mean to sew or upcycle garments into beautiful things. So I'd say it's a rather magical thing. These are usually a dollar or so. Get a couple. It's nice to have a sharp one handy. You want something that can mark your fabric that will either brush away, melt away, disappear, or easily wash away. I have some Taylor's chalk, Taylor's wax, chalk pencil and a disappearing marker which is actually my favorite to use because it doesn't need any sharpening and it's precise although it does have the downside that on some fabrics it doesn't disappear so you kind of have to check you don't want to end up with a stain on your garment This is a wonderful sewing tool. It will help so much in the sewing process. Whether to pre-fold edges and hems or press finish seams, it generally makes the garment look clean and crisp. I have this old iron, which actually works really beautifully. And I always say this, a good press or seam always makes the garment look just that little bit more professional. Both of these iron boards I found at a thrift store for less than $5. If you don't have an iron board, you could just layer a towel and that would work pretty well. This little wooden one is great for ironing seams in sleeves or pant legs. And this one's really handy, it's just a mini version of a full size. It pops up into a mini tabletop iron board. It's really great and portable, easy to pull out rather than a full size. I see these all the time at thrift stores, so just keep a lookout for them. If you plan on making any type of garment, it's really great to be able to make patterns. Even just really basic ones, I'll be showing you how to do that. Patterns are kind of like templates or stencils that you can use to cut out the pieces in fabric that are the pieces that you sew together to make various garments. I generally like to use tracing paper. That's kind of all I have at the moment. I also like to use brown packing paper or pattern paper. You can get this in rolls from sewing supply stores or on Amazon. If you don't want to invest in rolls of paper, you can use newspaper, old wrapping paper. The dollar store has rolls of plain brown paper that will work really well. And I have actually found rolls of paper in the thrift store more than once and bought them. So just be resourceful and you will find something that will work. A few other little things that are helpful if you're interested in pattern drafting are some magic or also known as invisible tape because it allows you to write on it. A tracing wheel is also great. It's good to have one with the really big spikes because this is useful for if you wanna copy your own garments. What it does is it pierces through the fabric and the paper, creating a corrugated outline for you to then fill in with pencil. The more dull tracing wheel is not quite as effective for this purpose, but it can also be great for tracing just patterns. If you want to start creating patterns, it's best to work with a pencil. You'll see me use markers in my videos, but that's really just so that you can actually see what I'm doing. I like mechanical pencils because they're always sharp. It's also nice to have a little notebook solely for your projects to make sketches and notes. Now weights are also not really necessary, but they do come in handy, especially if you're cutting with a rotary blade and mat. They usually take the place of pins when cutting out patterns in your fabric. You can get really creative with weights. You could use anything relatively small and heavy around the house. Keep your eyes peeled at the thrift store, again, for paper weights, strong, large bolts, and leg workout strap inserts. My mom actually found these and then she just sewed this cover on them 
and their amazing wigs. And of course, fabric is most essential. If you're a beginner, start with non-stretchy, non-slippery fabrics. So you want plain cotton of any kind, linen or woven polyester. There's always tons of fabric in the thrift store. This yellow fabric is actually a bed sheet. I actually made my first bed sheet dress out of a queen flat sheet a couple of weeks ago, and it turned out really well. I'm kind of hooked. And last and yet most important is the sewing machine. You can hand sew, but a machine will cut down time immensely and just make life so much easier if you're a sewer. I actually have four machines, an Industrial Juki DDL 8700, which I use for straight stitching, my beloved domestic, which I use primarily for zigzag and buttonholes. It's a Kenmore. I don't think Kenmore exists anymore. I have a Kenmore overlocker and a Janome cover pro. All you really need is a domestic machine with straight stitch, zigzag, buttonhole capabilities, and a few other stitches. And it will be perfect for all your needs. You do not need all these machines. A decent starter machine will be anywhere from $150 to $300, unless you get a secondhand machine. Most of the machines I have owned, and the two Kenmores I currently own are secondhand, but then again, my mom was always able to help me with these secondhand machines. Nowadays, there are a lot of tutorials online, so a secondhand machine could be a great option if you're okay with doing a little research and learning your machine yourself. Otherwise, buy a new one as you'll be able to start sewing right out of the box. You'll know that it works 100% and it'll basically be smooth sailing. When selecting machine, you want to look for something that's not cheaply made and covers the basics that I mentioned. In my sewing machine options video, I will go into more detail about this and I will be reviewing a number of machine options under $300. I'll be showing you what each one offers and help you to be more well equipped to choose a machine. So if you're interested in that, I'll have that video linked below. Well, thanks for watching. Bye! Oh, 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 oh